Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. It's been a while. So I'm actually at home right now. It is December 22nd, 2022. I've been waiting a very long time to show you guys one of my, I consider my personal masterpiece, as well as a lifelong goal that I had since I've been like 13 years old. And this is my 120 centimeter rimless discus uh, aquarium. This tank took over almost a year of planning for me after I realized that I could you know, do it. Um, then when my daughter was born, we took her to the San Antonio Aquarium and she's just obsessed with fish. I told my wife, I was just like, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's bite on the discus and here we are. So without further ado, I would like to show you the dude's discus aquarium. So for starters, uh, this, like I said, this is a 120 centimeter, so it's about 114 gallons. I am running two Kessel Tuna Suns A360Xs with the Altum Nature metal bars here. What I really like about these is that they actually hide all the cords and everything. Uh, so that way you're not seeing a lot of wires in the back of the aquarium. Now that's something, you know, that's more of aesthetics. I also have the, the magnetic... Uh, covers on these to help concentrate the light more into a beam and as you can see I have the tops of my driftwood directly underneath this beam now that was done by purpose uh, Because my hope is to one day have a small monstera or something growing above here, but that's for another day um, As far as filtration I am running uh, an ADA super jet now this baby as you can see this thing was a little over a thousand bucks but it, in itself, it, it paid, paid, paid for itself. Uh, I am running aftermarket Altum Nature glass lily pipes. Uh, I have the larger end of the tubing here, smaller end of the tubing here. And then as far as heating, I am using a Fluval heater as well as the, the Fluval uh, fan at the top to help with oxygenation since that is so important when it comes to keeping the discus and of course the other fish in the aquarium. Now I just want to start by saying is like this is not a build video, this is not a how-to video. This is just me showing you something that I like genuinely love and something that I'm genuinely proud to show you guys. I've had this set up since July 14th, 2022. So we are six months in. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so let, let's start with the, with the uh, goon squad. So I have a total of six, six discus in here. They are all wild discus. Um, I have two tefe greens um, and four trombita discuses, which are, you know, your, your wild types as well. The, the true tefe greens, um, which I'm really happy to have these guys. They are just simply beautiful. And what's really cool about the discus is their mood can, um, their color kind of tells you what their mood is, um, you know, as well as their eyes. There are some like localities that don't have the dark red pigment in their eyes. Others have more of an amber, which I think is really cool. And you can see this guy, they're looking at each other and they're getting fired up. So initially, uh, I only did start with four discus um, because I really wanted to have six months of success under my belt. Um, and then just about two weeks ago, I added the true Tefe greens, two of them, which are actually the two. The one is the largest discus in the enclosure and the other is just the same size as the smaller one. So you can see four or five goons over here. And then I got another goon over here in the Halter household. They're called the goon squad. As you can see, these bad boys right here, I actually have three of those. I just call them earth eaters. And I really like these guys because they do take a lot of the sediment up and it goes through their system and it comes back out. Uh, and it really helps keep everything, you know, fresh and flourish, flourishing in here. Uh, I have two Festivum cichlids as well. So you can see, though they, they, these guys have the lateral stripes and you can see them kind of behind the discus here. Um, and then I also have three Bolivian rams. Look at that. That's one of the Tefe greens right there. One of the Bolivian rams, he's right back there. Uh, these guys will come out in a second, of course, after I feed them. I also have five Corydoras cat 
uh, catfish in here. Um, and they typically come out as the sun goes down and typically as it's, as it's coming back up, as well as a gold nugget pleco. I see that fish once every like three months. As far as moss and everything is concerned, um, let's get started over here. Every single plant in this enclosure came from a tissue culture, literally a tissue culture. This is called spiky moss. And as you can see, it has very different types of, you know, growth going over here. This right here is spiky moss. This right here is spiky moss, but this right here, this is not spiky moss. This is called weeping moss. I actually just put this on here um, not that long ago. And then over here, we have what is called Taiwan moss here at the top. And you can see how it grows differently when it's under the, under the water versus on the water. So as you can see kind of how, how it grows, we do have, you know, a good amount of, you know, of the fluffiness in here. A lot of people don't keep a lot in with discus. It's more of a modest hardscape, if anything, but you know, I'm, I really like water, water quality as well. And while too many plants can be an issue with discus, I do know that the, you know, the, all the epiphytic plants I have in here, which is the Anubia species, as you can see, every plant that isn't a moss is Anubius. All different types and kinds all came from tissue cultures and they all started as a, as a plug that big. I literally just, pardon me guys, I just put this guy in here this week. And all these plants started to be this side, this size. And I also have some, some of the boost plants in here. Okay. All right. As far as what I feed these guys, normally Carolyn feeds them, but they get frozen with bloodworms as well as the Cyclops blend, which isn't that much for the discus, but it is for, you know, everything else in there. And then we do also do, I do also do brine shrimp. So initially, yeah, you can see the greens. You can see a distinct difference. So green, green, and then you can see the, the, the schwams right there. Like, like there's, it's a very minute difference. And let me tell you guys, the tefe greens, the blue, the blue glows, almost glows in the dark at night. So obviously like all of my aquariums and terrariums, that I do, everything is automated. The, this light goes to full capacity, um, which is only a 20% total of max, by the way. So I'm only operating each of these at 20% spectrum. So I have it way dialed down because discus don't like really bright light. Um, and it comes, turns on at 6.30 in the morning, but it isn't at this capacity until eight o'clock. And then when 6.30 comes around, it's the same cycle and except it's off at 7.30. Um, and that's how I've been, you know, maintaining it. As far as water changes go, uh, I do a water change down to right here uh, every other week right now. And I buy filtered water from the AquaZoo by the five gallons and it's great. Um, and as well as with that water change, when I do it, uh, I always put in some Tetra Safe Start into my filter intake just to be safe. Um, mainly when I have to do pad changes in my filter. So in my filter loadout, I'm running 30 to 60 ppm filter foam, Purigen, as well as the pumice stones. I'd say 55% of that filter is my bacterial medium, the pumice stones. Um, I'm not using any carbon. Car, you don't want, to, don't want to use carbon for discus from how, what I was taught from my mentor. Um, as well as, you know, the different filter poems and then the Purigen. And the Purigen lasts maybe three weeks. Uh, and then usually once a month, I'll swap out the Purigen, reconstitute the old month in bleach, and I get this nice crystal clear water. Um, as far as my water level, this is about where I keep it, a half an inch under the top. Haven't had anybody jump out. Um, I just always tell people, if I have people over for cards or something, that they approach the tank slowly if it's during the day because I have peep, my friends can tell you that they get spooked when it's somebody that they don't actually recognize that comes in here. Um, and then the last thing I feed, or not last thing, besides the dry food, which these guys love, is live brine shrimp. This is like one of the healthiest things that you can uh, get. 
to feed these guys and you know the earth eaters go go nuts the oblivion rams go nuts as far as maintaining the ph i do you can see various botanicals in here uh you can actually see one of the quarry cats out right now this is a rarity because they're usually only out you know right when uh right as that sun is starting to come up or go down but you know and then you can also see the one lone neon tetra i did have 22 of them he is the last guy i gotta t catch him and take him to the dude i don't think they died i'm pretty sure the festivums the oblivion rams and all of my cichlid creatures ate them but as you know it's life and it's really good to nurture the natural so as far as wood i got three pieces of 24 inch ghost wood in here two in the middle one on the left gotta be honest i was a little hesitant using it because discus can get scratched and stuff which i know it sounds crazy but the stuff you read on the internet right um when i designed this aquarium you notice all the rocks piled in the center here with the ghost wood coming out of it i actually created a tunnel that's a minimum of about this big that goes from point A to point B. So the fish like to go up in there to sleep and come out of the holes in the front. Uh, that is called Texas Select Driftwood. And I got that from the Aquarium Design Group in Houston, Texas. Highly recommend you guys check them out as well as the Aquazoo Houston in Houston. As far as my rocks are concerned, I did use uh, the Dragonstone, which is more centralized in the middle. But, you know, I did really want to try and like spread out the types of rock I was using instead of just a single piece. So I got some, some rainbow stone in here, which is centralized on the left side and the bigger chunks on the right. And that I did also get from the aquarium design group. Anyway, guys, I just really was excited to show this to you. Um, this is just something I've been wanting to show for a long time and I just never really got the opportunity. We do sell a lot of this stuff on my website um you know we can special order you you uns stuff you know uh if there's anything special that you actually want me to carry that kind of comes from this let me let me know but all the plants and stuff we good again my name's josh halter owner and founder of the bio dude i really appreciate y'all's support thank you for listening goodbye